Who knows what this is? Yes, the Club Nintendo registration card. Um, so that's it. Uh, Nintendo are pulling the plug on uh, Club Nintendo, it seems. Um, been going since... Uh, to th well, its origins lie back in uh, 2002. Uh, I think they, they called it Club Member or 24-7 back then, something like VIP. And then it, it created Club Nintendo in uh, 2007 or 8. I think it was 2007. The end of 2007. And so they did the... It's a loyalty program, if you don't know. Uh, so they would put these in, or something similar to this, with the games and products and stuff that they do. With a little code, a pin code, and you get loyalty points, or stars. The little gifts and presents and stuff. Uh, but come uh, September this year, that is it. Excuse me, excuse the banging. I don't know what's going on. It's a herd of elephants up there. I, don't, I have no idea what's going on. Maybe someone opened the gates. Can you hear that? That's a four-year-old making that noise. Anyway, so uh, what do I feel about uh, Nintendo uh, ditching uh, their loyalty program? So I know that uh, Nintendo said that they would. They, they've stated that there's going to be a new loyalty program, going to be uh, replacing uh, Club Nintendo. We don't know what uh, form this is going to take, but uh, some people are uh, having a go at Nintendo about this, and you know, getting a bit upset by it. I'm not really that upset by it. I mean, it's uh, arduous. If anyone's registered a product, it's the, they, they take you through this questionnaire, which is absolute repetitive nonsense. Uh, I suppose I know what they have to do at market research and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it doesn't really bother me, to be honest. Uh, but I'm excited to see what the, the replacement will be. Um, it's annoying, I suppose, for a lot of people if they have lots of stars because their catalogue is not that extensive uh, there's not many things in there that um, appeal uh, I've used up all my stars uh, by ordering the Mario Kart 8 t-shirt that's really much it, that's all I really can get with uh, what I've got I haven't registered everything and a lot of the second hand stuff I've got these have either gone or that's been scratched off and it's redundant so yeah please uh, in the description box what do you think about Club Nintendo uh, being ditched X Club Nintendo. Um, well, they, 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 they did have the Game and Watch in there. I wish they'd had enough points for the Game and Watch. That was really, really, pretty cheeky. And of course, the uh, the question mark block. But I haven't got them. But I will be getting a T-shirt, and I'll be showing that off uh, at a later date. But yeah, it's just a, a, a tidbit of news recently. Another little bit of Nintendo playing with the cogs. Interesting. Uh, I'd like to know your thoughts on that. Uh, what are you going to miss about it? If you're going to miss Club Nintendo at all, uh, if you're not bothered, what you think the new replacement loyalty scheme will be, so on and so forth. So, um, that aside, what have I been picking up to lately? Picking up to lately? Picking up lately? Well, a plethora of stuff, in fact. We have Xbox, PlayStation 2 and Amstrad. So we'll start off with uh, PlayStation 2. We have Max Payne. The original for a bargain 75p uh, from CEX box instructions. All these are pretty good condition and they've all got light surface scratches, uh, but they're all pliable, all in pretty good nick. And for that kind of price, you can't say no, can you? <laughs> now, this game, I've got, I've got a affinity for shite games, as a lot of people know, and um, this is a shite game according to my editor. Uh, of uh, the Pixel Empire, and I think CEX priced it accordingly as well at right? 35p. Wow, you know, you can get uh, can't get half a chocolate bar for 35p. But uh, no instructions. But the Sniper 2. And apparently, this game is pretty bad. Um, not bad condition, I suppose. But I do like bad games, and uh, I'm actually quite interested to give that a go. Uh, the other one. Ah, yes, the Summoner 1. Uh, I think a while back, uh, my good friend Chris Shank sent me as a uh, sort of Brucey bonus the, the Summoner 2 on the PS2. So, Summoner 1. So that uh, goes with its uh, sequel. Again, pretty good condition. And very sawish kind of hand thing there. It looks like the. Uh, I wonder if the uh, artwork for one of the Saw films was inspired by that. It looks like it. And finally, um, because 
I miss this is another franchise I miss and the fact that I'm not a big fan of FPS's anyway is the original Killzone on the PlayStation 2 two pound this as well uh, so there's uh, still a bit of value in it and it's got the uh, <laughs> the, uh, the little mock newspaper inside it still it's war vector today vector today vector today so the batteries today so this is in the best condition out of the PlayStation 2 games as well so I'm not surprised but two pound oh two pound it nearly ruins it two pound is a good price now a couple of Xbox games which I'm glad uh, that uh, Phil didn't uh, get me when I was uh, when I was getting need picking these up Mate of mine, friend, uh, my co-writer on TPE raves about this, as does many other people, and that is Half-Life 2 on the, the Xbox original, of course, in excellent condition. So I had to pick this up. It's in real top-notch quality condition, and uh, people say that the PC version is the best. I don't know. Never played it. Never played this version either. But now I've got a version of it, which I will be playing soon enough. And finally, uh, on the disc stuff, should I say, well, sort of, we'll see in a minute, Doom 3 on the uh, Xbox, of course. Unless this one has a black box, which is a shame because I like the green boxes. Pound, not bad. Again, this is in brilliant condition, uh, really good condition, and uh, that the instruction manual is really nice. Love a bit of Doom, one of the few SPSs I do do enjoy. I do do enjoy, I do do. Um, now moving on to so Amstrad Loving, we have we've got some uh, five cassettes here, and I've got these from uh, a person I've purchased from before off the Amstrad forums on Facebook. A few budget titles, but they're always in good condition, fair price. What I get from him, all 75p each, uh, and he did me a good deal on postage too. But the first one is Super Scramble Simulator by our good friends at Kicks, and all of these. Are in really really good condition really solid no uh, I mean you look key thing is you've got to look at is people poking these out and scratches and marks on the tapes of course the cover you know, the inlays being damaged that is in really really good condition and of course we've got a pair a pair of Olins on the ropes and in the caves by our good friends at Amsoft in discomp these two really mean in this comp, of course, Roland in the Caves is um, mind blank. The Flea game, the one on the spectrum, can't fucking remember what it's called now. Uh, but it's a clone of that with the name change and a few other bits and pieces. But you play a flea in that one, and of course, on the ropes, done a gameplay of that. Uh, classic Amstoff game for the abstract. Again, these are both in brilliant condition. Uh, I picked this up to replace the one that I sent to my good buddy Lawn Boy. Uh, because <laughs> I, I loved it, I, I don't know why, it's, it's bloody hard and ultra frustrating this game, the Galactic Plague, but it's one of my favourite Amazon titles. And that's why I sent it to Dave actually, because I knew he would like it. So that's to replace it. And finally, one of the finest darts games you can get on the 8 bits. 180! I said that really loud, didn't I? Sorry. Apologies. If you're wearing headphones, I do apologise. This is in, again, great condition. I have no idea what that's all about, the label. I mean, it's not exactly darts related. But um, it's a really good darts game, this. really do like it. Uh, it's uh, kind of specky looking with its um, uh, sort of monochrome two, two, two color look, but it's real good fun. And uh, not, not, hard, not easy, not easy at all. So we've got that little lot. And finally, I got a box sent to me from uh, my fellow YouTuber Benny. You may know him as Long Rod Von. Ugh, I knew I'd get that wrong. Long Rod Von Hugendon. I normally get it right. <laughs> and he sent me this box. Um, I'm not going to tell you what the outside of the box was, but it was rather dubious, wasn't it, Benny? Um, but uh, what the contents of the box was fantastic. There was a note. I'll read the note before I flash that off. He likes it. A disposable CD sleeve. Nice, nice one, Ben. Uh, hi, Chris. Uh, yeah, he's put a lot of, he's put some sort of silly, stupid note here on the side. I don't know what he's talking about. He says something about the CPC's poo. I, I don't know. I, you know, um, he must have been thinking of some other machine, uh, the Spectrum, maybe. 
Hi Chris, uh, was given these games by a lovely man called The Shadow's Nose. I, I am a subscriber to the, Sh the Shadow's Nose and he does a lot of good Atari gameplays as well. And Commodore 64 too. Uh, I've kept them for, uh, I have kept them for whatever reason. I have left one for, I don't know, I, Benny you're writing. It's worse than mine and that's saying something. Uh, and the rest, dear boy, I give to you. I know that bit. Take care, bugger, Benny. Thank you very much, Benny. But I tell you what, surprising, surprising for what came out of this box. First of all, smooth MJ, hold on to your butt. <laughs> Sorry about that. My daughter's just come into shot there and then spoken. Shush. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Boxed, big box as well, and look at the quality of this. This is like it's just come straight from the shelves. Um, really good condition. There's a there's a catch about all these, by the way, and I'll tell you in a minute what it is. Um, and the second, uh, sort of not big box, but a, a mini box. I used to get buy a lot of games like this within these card boxes, which is Dynamite Ducks. Do you X? Uh, sort of scrolling beat 'em up kind of thing. Excellent. Again, brilliant condition. Really, really good condition. Staying with the Dynamite theme, we have Dynamite Dan 2. Tester. Or Tesla. Or Tesca. Or something like that. I don't know. And finally, uh, Firebird. Salvage. So, but the thing about all these, thing about all these, right, <coughs> is that I can't play them at the moment. I can't play them at the moment because they're all on Amstrad Disk. I've still got to find a affordable disk drive uh, for my CPC. So that's rather unfortunate. Uh, but they're in fantastic condition. They really are. I love them. Uh, really, really good condition. Look, I'm saying the quality of this Michael Jackson's is unbelievable. It's wonderful. It looks great on the shelf. And it, you know. Still, still in its uh, protective bag, baggy, and you've got the disc, of course, in absolutely wonderful condition. It's not, it's not got any marks on it, so it's locked. It's never been played. Um, little sort of flyer guy thing, but look at this. Check this out. This, the original, because in big boxes like this, you get things of promotional stuff. Ah, yeah, hey, look at that. The uh, original promotional poster that came with it. Fan flipping tastic. So thank you, Benny, for that. Thank you, Longwood. It's fantastic stuff, mate. Really, really do appreciate it. Top man. And a top man to the Shadow's Nose, too. For, for the condition of these things is wonderful. Um, brilliant. So really happy with uh, this month's pickups. And like I say, let me know what you think of Club Nintendo giving it the elbow, giving it the old heave ho. And. Uh, on behalf of Roland, I will bid you a fine farewell, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much. Roland Neverberg out!